contact. Who should we notify in the case of death? Welcome to the USP. I just want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. And I hope you guys had a good one. You know, during the season, it's an opportunity for us to spend time with our family outside of the normal busy routine that we have going throughout the rest of the year. You know, for me, it was bittersweet. You know, I went out to Denver to go spend um, Thanksgiving with my in-laws, with my wife's family. And I enjoyed them. The food was great. You know, I had a wonderful time. But at the same time, it's always in the back of my mind about, you know, the friends and the people that I know that are spending that holiday stuck in a cell. You know, because it could have been so easy for me to still be in their position. The stuff that I was doing out here that led me to catch my 26 years, I could have easily gotten a life sentence. And, you know, sometimes people is like, don't understand when I say, even though I got 26 years, I was still lucky and, I was, and I'm still grateful. And I really mean that. Because even though I had to do, you know, spend the last 24 years of my life in prison, I have an opportunity now to be home, to spend these holidays with my family and my friends. I have the opportunity now to sit here on YouTube and share stories about it. But I have friends that are not ever gonna have those chances. That every day is the same old shit. They're stuck in a cell. Right now, Florence USP is on lockdown. You know, Cause usually around the holidays, I get calls from different people that I still keep in contact with. And I just got a letter from one of my friends telling me that you know they've been on lockdown. You know, I plan to bring you guys these stories from them, from them calling home in real time about things that are going on on their compound, things that are going on around them on their yard. But lately, the USP's been in a funk. A lot of the places that I have people that I keep in contact with people, they've been on lockdown because there's been incidents after incident after incidents. And it's never gonna end, you know, because the environment that is set up isn't designed for us to coexist in peace. Just imagine you have some of the most violent individuals throughout the United States and even around the world in a box. So we all, you always hear the saying, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And that's the reality of it. It's not if something's going to blow up, it's a matter of when it's going to blow up. Especially around this, this time of year. You know, through the course of my time that I've been in the penitentiary, a lot of stuff happened around this time of year. And the reason it, for me, in my opinion, the reason it does is because, you know, this is stressful time for people in the penitentiary. Out here is a time of celebration. It's a time where you can get days off of work. Your kids are out of school for a few days and you're able to spend family times, go to the movies, have dinner together and enjoy each other's company. Well, in the penitentiary, at this time, it's a time where we're remembering the times that we used to be out here during this time. And it emphasizes the things that we're missing out on. You know, you know, you call home, all your relatives are sitting down for Thanksgiving dinner and you can hear the voices in the background. You know, I'm just speaking from my, from my own experience. You know, I know everybody's gonna congregate 
at my parents' house or my sister's house or my brother's house. And they're going to celebrate this holiday. You know, before I met my wife, I really didn't call home that much because, you know, it's hard calling home and hearing about the struggles and things that they're going on that's going on with them and their lives and me being in a position not to do anything about it. You know, but when I met my wife, she allowed me, she was a bridge between me and my family. She allowed me to participate in all the birthdays and holidays and stuff that I normally wouldn't call home for just because you know, I had my mind set to do this 20 something years. And for me, the best way for me to do it was to cut the street loose. You know, so like my homeboys and people that I do call, they, only, they would only get calls from me when I needed some. And that was rare and far in between because I pride myself in being able to take care of myself but there's certain times that I overextended myself or things didn't go right and I need a little assistance. And then I call home, you know, but hooking up with my wife, writing my wife through all those years, I called her every day, you know, twice, three times a day. I've always been on phone restriction. So I've always bought other people's phone just to make sure that I can call home and speak to my wife. And she moved out here from Denver to settle in Utah to prepare a life for us. You know, I tell my wife all the time, she's the embodiment of all the rap songs that dudes rap about. Having a ride or die chick, somebody to hold you down, have your back through thick and thin. You know, people that lived our life, we always dream about that. That, that girl that embodies that. And she's the one for me that embodies everything that the gangster wants in a woman, you know? And, you know, through the course of the years that I've done time, I've been the envy of my peers because I had a woman that held me down through thick and thin. Even when I was fucking up, even the times that I was in the shoe. From 2015 to 2017, I was slammed down for two years straight. You know, I'm sure you guys experience it. You guys know other people, dudes that get locked up, their girl six months in and their girls, you know, disappeared like a magician. And there's some people that was able to hold on to their girl a little longer because they've got kids with them or they were married. But doing 20 something years, homie, there's not gonna be a lot of people left out here for you. And when you find those that have your back, whether it's your brother, your parents, your homeboy, or your girl, you have to be appreciative of that and be grateful of that. And I am. You know, through her, I was able to reconnect with my family. Because like I said, when I got sentenced and I was facing all this time and knowing that I had decades ahead of me, I pretty much cut everybody loose, you know. I still called my homeboys because I felt that the homies were obligated to me. We took an oath to have each other's back. We entered into a, you know, a different realm. And so if I needed something, I didn't want to call my parents or call my siblings. But my siblings at the time, they were too young. They were all still in school. They ranged from the age of eight to 17. You know, and, you know, I repeat again, I've been in a unique position my whole life. My homies held me down. You know, before I met my wife, I had my brother and a couple of my homeboys that always picked up my call. And I'm all, and I'm always gonna be forever grateful for that. 
you know, this Thanksgiving, you know, these are the things that I'm grateful for. I'm grateful for the people that I've had around me my whole entire life. You know, people that's been down for me, that's been loyal to me, and that loves me. And I just want to take this opportunity to let them know that I really appreciate them. You know, I don't want to go, you know, name per name. The list is too long. But again, I've been blessed and I've been fortunate. But the majority of the people that are incarcerated don't have the resources that I have. Don't have the love that I have. You know, I've sat there and watched homies get phone calls from a chaplain. You know, when you're on the yard kicking it and you hear over the intercom, so-and-so, report to the chapel. So-and-so, report to the chapel. We know 10 times out of 10 times, the only time that the chaplain is trying to get a hold of you if something tragic has happened in your family. And I've sat there and watched, you know, the panic in my friend's eyes when they hear their name being called over their intercom to report to the chapel. Because we all know, we all, we all sit there and hear it every single year. It's the same routine, you know, but it's always been other people. But when it's close to home, when it's somebody you know, you know, when you hear, like my friend Alan, we call him Trigger. He's a black dude from uh, New Orleans. You know, me and him met back in uh, Lompoc in 2001, and we became good friends. And when he ended up in Atwater, I made him an on honorary Islander. Like, he's Louisiana. He's in good standing with his homeboys and stuff, but his homeboys know the rapport that me and him have. And when he came to Atwater, we reconnected. He sat at my table in the chow hall. He kicked it with me on the yard. Like, you know, we were road buddies. And one day we were on the yard and they call his name, Alan. Report to the chapel. And just remembering that incident, like we were over there by my poker table. You know, I ran a poker table in Atwater. And we're all playing cards or whatever. I'm not playing card. Me and Trig, we on the other table kicking it, smoking, doing what we do. I got a couple of dudes that's running a poker table with for me. And yeah, we were just kicking it, chopping it up, giggling, laughing, whatever we was doing. And then when his name came on the intercom, Alan report to the chapel. Like everybody that was sitting at our table with us all at the same time just got quiet. Because we all knew or suspected what it was going to be. And we were just like, you know, it's almost like we were holding our breath that we didn't even know. And we just looked at the homie and we was like, damn, you know, everybody's thinking the same thing. Like, damn, you know? And he looked and he's like, fuck. And we just looked at each other because we already know there's not gonna be any good news, you know? We don't say anything. He gets up, goes to the gate. The CO comes and pops him out and escorts him down to the chapel. And I don't see him again for the rest of the day until dinner time. Because at the time that they called him, it was after lunch. You know, at recall, at 3.30 is recall, 4 o'clock is lockdown count. So at 4.30, 5 o'clock, they pop the doors and starts calling us for chow. Usually, I don't go to chow, you know? Like, again, I've always been fortunate enough to build a hustle and eat what I want to eat, you know, within the limitations of the resources that we have in the penitentiary. But 
today I made I made a point to go to chow because you know my homeboy just got called to the chapel. So when I went to chow, he didn't show up. He wasn't in the chow hall. So when he didn't when I because you know they already called his unit already. So when I went to chow hall and they said no, nah, he didn't come to eat, he's in the house. I went back and went to his block. You know, you're not supposed to be able to go in other people's unit and all that, but I have my ways to be able to get in, you know what I mean? And I walked into the unit, went up to his cell, and he was on his bunk. You know, you can see when you look at his face, you can see his eyes been puffy, you know? Like he's been crying. Yeah, I don't know. What the stigma is about men crying or whatever, but I can promise you there's a lot of tears behind those walls. You know, you're not out in the yard walking around sobbing, it's not coming out of your nose or anything like that. But when their doors are closed, there's nights where I don't care who you are, man. I don't care if you're the toughest gangster out there. I don't care if you're a cold-blooded killer. I know there's been times when the doors are closed that your body can't hold it, hold on to it anymore. You know, but there's no words that you could ever express or say to soften the blow. And knowing that, there wasn't much that I did say. You know, I just asked the homie if he needed anything, if there's anything I could do, you know, just let me know. You know, gave him the dap, the bro hug, and rolled out. You know, at these times, dudes don't really want to be around other dudes, you know what I mean? Where they're exposing themselves, their vulnerability. You know, they just want to be able to just take a time out. Because in the penitentiary, there's no privacy. Your doors are always open. There's always movements. You can't lock your door. The only time your door locks is between 10 o'clock to 6 in the morning. Outside of that, there's no way to get away from anybody or anything, you know? But if you have a Roselli that's respectful, he understands that you're going through some, and he might not, you know, be the one that be going out to the yard all the time or whatever, but, you know, out of respect, you know, he might just take a day and go out to the yard. Just let you be by yourself. And that's why I say again, today's holiday, not today, but this last past Thanksgiving, it's been bittersweet. You know, I enjoyed my time out here with my in-laws. I enjoyed the food, the festivities. But always in the back of my mind is just people that are still back there. And I know how they're spending their holiday. Like right now, USP Florence and a couple other spots that people hollered me from are on lockdown. You know, while I'm eating turkey, I can't help but imagine that they're eating a little slab of processed turkey. You know, the gravy's too salty. The mashed potatoes raw. And it's just some bullshit. But that can't be helped. That's just, that's the life we live. That's the life that I live. That's the life they're in, stuck in right now, you know? So, without being, taking too much of your guys' time, you know, if you didn't take the time to be grateful for the things that you have now, 
You can do it now. You can you can be grateful for everything that you have every single day. You know, it's not about what you don't have. It's not about what somebody else has that you don't. It's not about any of that, man. Just look around you and I promise you, you can find things if you look to be grateful for. I'm fresh out of prison. I've been home a year and a couple months. Been grinding away every day, working towards my goals and my dreams. I don't have a lot, but I have a lot to be grateful for. You know, and one of the things that I'm most grateful for this holiday is my wife, my family, and then my homies and those who order. I'm grateful for my little doggy, my little pity, Kiki, Wheezy, Sophie. You know, I don't have any kids, but at this particular time, this is my family. And yeah, I'm so grateful for the opportunity to be here, to be with them and to share this holiday with them. And I just wish the best for all my friends that are still behind the wall, that I hope that, you know, they stay strong and hopefully someday make it out. Welcome to the USP.